Hi, we're back in the Davis Media Access studio for another episode of The City Considers. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and this month, February 2018, we are talking about the Downtown Plan Advisory Committee. And my guests today are Rob Davis, who's the mayor of our Fairburg, and Meg Arnold, who is serving as chair of the Downtown Plan Advisory Committee. Welcome to you both. Good to be here. Thank you. So this process that you're undertaking is going to span roughly two years and attempt to project out a couple of decades, no small feat. Um, I'm really interested to learn more about mm -hmm. what the process is and sort of what's driving it. And I believe, let's start with you, Rob, because sure. I believe it came from uh, part of the council's resolutions or goals moving forward. Yeah, I mean, actually three years ago, uh, council started talking to staff about the need to update our broader city general plan. And nested within that was the, was the idea of the core area itself, the downtown. And staff recommended that we begin the process of updating our entire general plan with a revisioning of our downtown, since that's the area where most change in, is, is likely throughout the city. Um, um, there was a desire to understand you know, how to achieve prior core area goals, such as having more people live downtown, how to deal with retail and the Amazonization mm. age that we're in. Right. And so we decided at that point to focus our initial efforts on a visioning process for the core area of the downtown. The fact is that everything about business and how we uh, how we move through the city and how the, and the city itself is built, everything has changed since the major planning affecting the downtown was yes. enacted yes. all those years ago. Well, and right, and I think one of the key things, if you look back at the prior plans, uh, way even way back, is there was a real desire to see more people not just coming into the downtown, right. but making the downtown mm -hmm. their home, recognizing that that's critical for vitality. We're not getting there. And so the question is, you know, how do we take a comprehensive look at retail, at living, at, um, you know, at all the elements that come around people being in that space 24 hours a day, security, all mm -hmm. of those things in a comprehensive way so that we can plan moving forward about how to achieve the things that we've said we wanted to achieve for a fairly long time. Right. So we have the need for that kind of information driving it. How is this going to play out? What have you taken on, Meg? <laughs> uh, well, it, actually, it's a fabulous process, and it's a great challenge. Mm -hmm. And it's a really important one for the future of the city and the future of the type of community that we decide that we want to be collectively. So. Um, the Downtown Plan Advisory Committee um, that I chair is a fairly large group of about 19 individuals, um, some of whom are, uh, were appointed representing specific other organizations mm -hmm. in our city and sure. some of whom were appointed at large. I was one of the at-large appointees um, directly by council. And um, we're embarking on a, a two-year, roughly two-year, 18 months to two-year process that will include uh, an enormous amount of opportunity for public input and public comment. Uh, that's obviously, as in, with any public process, and particularly in a community like Davis, a really critical part of the outcomes that we're going to drive to, sure. and it'll really inform them. The city also has engaged a number of consultants who are helping to manage, helping staff to manage the overall process, and helping to make sure that the committee and the public input opportunities are as informed by data as possible. I was and these, are not, these are not just process yeah. people. These are right. some of the leading experts yes. in their fields of parking, downtown design, uh, sustainability. I mean, we've got yeah. an amazing consulting team that's coming. I to noticed work with how our local specific group. their expertise is. Yes, was. very. Yeah. Yeah. There's and very parking different. and there's transportation, and right. they're different. Different right. and, uh, experts. Yeah. Historic structures, exactly. sustainability, yeah. Yeah. Right. water use, I mean, all of that. Yeah. 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 So the, this process, all the ways that people will have to, um, to kind of feed into it, let's talk about some mm -hmm. of those. Mm -hmm. uh, let, why don't you tell us, tell everyone what a charrette is? Sure. Because there's going to be a couple of those, at least a couple of those. There will be a couple of sustained charrette opportunities. Yes. So a charrette is a, a common um, practice word for um, essentially a public workshop. A, a, a workshop with significant opportunity for public input and frankly formed around the, 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 the goal of significant public input. Right. And um, there will be at least two um, a series, two opportunities for, at a, for a couple of days at a time, actually I think four days at a time mm -hmm. at two separate opportunities yeah. um, for a sustained public charrette process. The first of these will be in late March. Um, the second of these will be further on into the process. Um, 
so in addition to the charrettes, all of the meetings of the Downtown Plan Advisory Committee are public meetings, and so there is opportunity at each of those for sure. public input and discussion. And as well, um, through the city's Downtown Plan uh, um, website, there's an opportunity to sign up for regular updates on where the process is, and in particular, what public input opportunities are coming up. Let's give that URL now, and we'll give it again at the end, uh, but cityofdavis.org forward slash downtown plan. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Get you there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, you had a, a public workshop on uh, last Thursday, you know, la yeah, just about a week ago. Any yeah. early takeaways, anything you can share from that? Well, Rob mentioned in his comments a minute ago the, the, the appreciation for the long-term impact of, of these plans. Yeah. And in fact, um, one of the consultants in his remarks to the committee and to the, to the public who were there um, was about the 1961 plan and some of the impacts that we still see today um, on downtown from that plan, which happened many, many years ago, possibly even before I was born. <laughs> and, um, you know, and so I think it was, it was, it was very sobering um, you know, to the folks in the committee. What I took from that was very sobering. Not just that we're planning for this 20 year looking forward period, which is daunting enough, but that what we as a city end up deciding as part of this process could stretch with impacts far beyond right. that 20 year right. period. And you know, another one of, of my own personal big takeaways from the session last week and some of the materials that um, has, have been made available is just the magnitude of changes in society and the way society is working mm -hmm. or is going to be working in the future you mentioned the Amazon, I can't say it the Amazonization. way you Amazonization. Amazonization. <laughs> um, of retail. Of yeah. retail. And so you look, at, you look at what's happening to retail, not just in our downtown, but nationally. Yeah. Um, and then you think as well on a completely, slightly, completely different realm about public personal transportation and public transportation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the, the likelihood of autonomous vehicles. And, and what that means for parking and the demand for parking, not in the next five to seven years perhaps, right. but certainly in the later years of this 20 year planning period. And so um, looking into the future at any point in time is really hard, but looking into the future in, in this particular set of years, I think so much change on the horizon, carries a yeah. lot of yeah. challenges. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I, it, that's the, that's, that can be daunting, right? Because mm -hmm. how do we plan for the short to medium term given what we know is coming later. But we're, I think what we're trying to do is set a table, right? And it's flexible enough, but really does drive towards the goals. I think to, one of the things that really grabs me about this process that I think may be different than other ones that mm -hmm. we've had is that we're taking a much harder look at the economics of the downtown. You know, the city had the redevelopment agency for you know, almost a generation, right. and um, it's gone now. So the incentives that could come from the, the resources that generated are gone. At the same time, we recognize one of the key messages is we have a lot of small plots in the downtown. We have a lot of areas that are difficult to imagine how to redevelop in the dense way that we think is necessary mm -hmm. to bring people down there. This process will bring expertise to the table to talk about, you know, really, what's it going to take to get there? And I know there's skepticism. Even some of the members of the, of the committee are saying, how do we get there in an economic and, and, and financial sense? We have to take a hard look at that because we can aspire to a lot mm -hmm. of things, but it's got to be grounded in the reality of what's possible for investors mm -hmm. and for people that are going to be willing to take the risks to drive the change based on their ownership of property or their desire to redevelop it. Right. How will the university feed into this process too? Are they, uh, do they have a stakeholder seat on this? Yes, on this, yep. Um, yep. we have university because, representation. Because obviously the, it's the, the UC, Davis, uh, UC Davis students represent a large portion of the number of people who use the downtown mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and even who would maybe be inclined to live there. And when you talk about densification, I assume you're talking about kind of work, live space, retail yeah, uh, below. Yeah, multi, let's say, let's call it mixed use, not mixed necessarily use. all work, mm -hmm. uh, live work, right, right. which we have in the Chen building. I'm not so sure I agree that the students will be there. I think the demographic that's primed to move into the downtown is, is, is my generation. Hmm. It's people who are empty nesters and who are looking to downsize and want that walkability, bikeability in a confined space, close to transit, close to you know, long distance transportation, which we have the train. I hear over and over, these are the people who want to live there. There is simply no supply. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm not, you know, I think around the periphery we'll continue to have students and certainly there's a stake that the university has, but I think the people that are gonna populate massively the downtown over the next 30 years are, are people who, who can live in smaller spaces and yet, 
quite frankly, afford something that is probably going to be priced at a premium, because mm -hmm. this is very, I mean, it's, 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 it's a very limited space. Right, um, yeah. And there's only so high that we're going to be able to go, even if we talk about densification. Mm -hmm. right. One of my takeaways from reading through the materials for this is that this is not a little tweak here or there. This is pretty much a wholesale revisioning of how we utilize our downtown and, and how it can work for us. I think it could end up as a yeah. wholesale revisioning. I think the, the scope is there to have it become that if that's what we hear through the process right. would be appropriate. I don't think it's necessarily a foregone conclusion. No, but the a, potential but the, for it is yeah, there. The opportunity yeah. is there to consider something yeah. as broad as that. Right, so for anyone watching, yep. their way to have their impact on that is to participate Absolutely. in one of these planning processes. Rob? Well, and the nice thing about the planning processes and why I hope people will participate is there will be people there with reality checks. I mean, these experts have seen a lot. Mm -hmm. They've been to a lot of communities. Um, they understand that while Davis is special, Davis is not unique. Mm. And so they're able to kind of ground the conversation in reality while giving people the opportunity to, to think big, you know, and, and, to, and to dream a little bit. But, but they're, they're, they're solid, you know, in their experience in being able to say, let's think about the potential there. And that's what I'm really excited about is that we, we've really multiplied the, 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 le the level and depth of, of, of expertise that we have to help ground the conversation in what's real in the short and longer term and benefit from what other communities have done, learn from them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that I'm really excited about. And I hope people will come because they'll get solid answers to their questions. They'll get good feedback on their ideas. And it'll really help the, the uh, committee to, you know, to digest and, and propose to the council uh, you know, a way forward. Right. So in terms of the next times to plug in, you mentioned one in March yes. coming up. And um, yeah. the week before uh, Davis Joint Unified Spring Break. Well, let's all pack it in at yes. once. Well, right? at least it's not the week of. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Which also happens to be the week before UC Davis Spring Break. Yes. Um, which, is, which is useful because students will still be around and in town. And to your point about UC Davis involvement, we do have yeah. a representative on the committee um, but it would be wonderful to see greater UC Davis student involvement in the rest of the public, public process as well. Right, because it, it's not just the, the, uh, the living downtown, yes. it was sort of how they, the coffee shops, how they, right. how they commute downtown, where they park, do they ride bikes, all yes. of that, where they eat. Is there food available yes. at 2 a.m.? Well, another thing that came out you know, is, is the arrangement of public spaces. Um, interestingly, we, we view our downtown as having that large green mm -hmm. park, but there's, mm -hmm. there's opportunity for more green spaces in the downtown. Town. There is the transit hub. You know, we want to create a, a greater sense of a true hub for transit. Well, that's going to bring many more people in and through the downtown, including students. So um, I, I'm not sure how we reach them and encourage them to participate, but they're clearly important stakeholders. And it was even remarked at, at, the, fir at the public meeting that you know, on the committee itself, there aren't any students, which is not unusual for Davis. You know, stepping up and volunteering, it's a big commitment. But we really want, and there were students at the workshop, and we hope that there will be more. Mm -hmm. uh, and the good news is there are a couple of professors who are on the committee who can encourage students to come as well. Great. What else would you like to know? We're down to about our last minute. What else would you like viewers to know right now? I think we could maybe repeat the URL for the website. <laughs> okay, that was cityofdavis.org forward slash downtown plan. Yep. And again, we've been talking about the downtown plan advisory committee and the work that's going to unfold over the next 18 months to two years, um, taking a look at our downtown and the many ways in which it's used and serves our community. I want to thank our mayor, Rob Davis, for coming back. I think this is your third time on the yeah. City Considers. We're always yeah. happy to have you and Meg. Thanks for uh, doing your first gig here. Good to be here. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in. You've been watching The City Considers here on Davis Media Access. Catch it online uh, at dctv.davismedia.org, and it'll air Tuesdays at 6.15 on Channel 15, Comcast Davis.